Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is a different type of video. I did, did I do something similar to this last year? I don't even know. But we are kicking off the MLS season as I think this video is going to be uploaded on Saturday, which is going to be the first day of games. I will be in Nashville for the Atlanta United kickoff against Nashville in Nashville. Obviously, I'm repeating myself a lot here, but I wanted to go ahead and do a season tier list maker. I could have done a full prediction, but I didn't want to try to choose the uh, the numbers of how teams are going to lay out and things like that. So I figure I do something a little bit different, but still give you guys my predictions of the conference winners, the teams that'll make it into the playoff spots, the hedge teams that'll be like right on the edge of making it and the verge of making it into those playoff spots, bottom of the barrel, the teams that I think that are, that are gonna be at the bottom, and of course the team to bring it all up and wrap into a nice little bow, Orlando City, which will probably be at the bottom of the Eastern Conference, and that's that. Actually, honestly, I don't even think they're gonna be bottom of the conference, but I don't even wanna like waste my time trying to figure out where they're gonna be because it's like, they can't really figure out what they want to do, so I already know they're not going to make the playoffs. They might be in that bottom of the barrel borderline hedge team um, around where FC Cincinnati is probably going to be, but uh, that's just how things are going to roll. So conference winners this season, it looks very interesting to me because uh, both of the LA teams look super, super strong. Obviously, Chicharito coming over to the MLS to play for LA Galaxy gives them a giant boost and hopefully can fill the shoes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, but I don't quite know if that's going to be the case. Um, the next two teams that are really going to be looking to take over that spot as a conference winner is going to be LAFC with Carlos Vela, obviously a team that did incredibly well last year, but lost Zimmerman to a team in the Western Conference, at least for this season, Nashville SC. Um, and that honestly leaves kind of a void in their back line. I do think they're going to be able to fill that void. I do still think they're going to be a very good team. I don't know if they're going to win the conference. They'll definitely make it to the playoffs and might make a very long run in the playoffs. Uh, but the team I'm seeing as I think the current favorite for the Western Conference, at least in my opinion, is Seattle. Um, I think as long as Seattle can get to a very strong start um, for this season, they're going to be very, very good. They're always better in the second half of the season anyways. That's why they're able to make such good runs in the playoffs. Uh, but I do think that their team is stable, which is one of the very few things that they've been able to do over the years. Uh, but I think a lot of their players are in really good positions. They haven't changed the team too much, but they've strengthened where they need to strengthen. And I do think that Seattle could make a run back to winning the conference and being at the top of the West come the end of the season um, and even make a run maybe for the... Uh, the MLS Cup again. So um, I do think they're going to be up there. For the East, honestly, I have no idea. I'd love to say Atlanta United, but obviously losing Nagby, losing Brandon Vasquez, who's not even that big of a player, but obviously super important as a bench player and a role player. Uh, losing Tito Vialba, losing Julian Gressel. I mean, the list goes on. LGP, you guys know the list of players that we've lost this year. I don't know if Atlanta United can make it to that conference winner spot because of how bad the beginning of this season could be. I think we could end up getting a very good team by the end of the year. We might even make signings. We might do changes here and there. But I don't know if we can do well enough at the very beginning of the season, especially with the injuries, plus the Olympics coming up this summer, which we might be losing Miles Robinson and uh, Brooks Lennon to, which would be two massive holes to fill in the squad, which Miles is already injured, so we're doing that right now. So I don't think it's Atlanta United. Um, one of the other teams I see up there is going to be Toronto, obviously a team that made it to the MLS Cup again last year, um, a team that is always seemingly in and around the playoffs and the top of the league. Um, I think that they've done a lot to uh, reassure their team. There's some weird stuff going on in the organization surrounding Josie Altidore, Michael Bradley, things of that nature. Uh, but. I do still think that they are a very strong squad. I do think that they have the capability to make a run in the playoffs, but the team that I'm gonna be choosing for the number one spot in the conference is actually gonna be NYCFC. Um, I think it's a team that has a lot of the capability to make it to the top, and this year they do have a very solid coach. As long as they don't lose that coach like they did in Patrick Vieira, um, I do think that this team could go on an incredible run uh, as they did to end out the season last year. I don't know how far they'll make it to the playoffs uh, because I don't know how 
strong the team's going to be by then. I don't know how strong the rest of the East Conference is going to be, but I do think they can put up really good numbers here at the beginning of the season and maybe even make it to the top of the league. Again, that doesn't mean they're going to make the MLS playoffs. It doesn't mean that they're going, or sorry, that they're going to make the MLS Cup, but I do think that they will get that number one seed going into the playoffs. So looking at the playoff spots, obviously we've talked about Toronto. We've talked about Atlanta United, LAFC, LA Galaxy, um, and who else have we talked about? I think that's it, right? And we're going through the rest of these teams now. So with the rest of the playoff spots, let's go Western Conference and let me confirm how many uh, how many playoff spots are there this year? I always forget. Let's go standings. So there's seven, right? I hope that's right. I think it's seven. So if there's actually seven, we have Seattle Sounders, LAFC, LA Galaxy. We'll do Western Conference first. Uh, Portland, I do believe, can make the playoffs. I don't know if they will. Uh, because of the changes they made this year, their team does look pretty strong. But I don't know if they have the capability to get off to that hot start that's going to allow them to make the playoffs. I'm going to put them in this list uh, just for argument's sake. So we'll do Western Conference over here. Um, let's go Colorado Rapids. Uh, we'll just go through the teams as we see them and just put them where we think they'll they'll be. Colorado Rapids, I do think is a good team. I don't know if I'm I'm for sure could putting them in a playoff spot. I think they're a hedge team. I think they could squeeze their way into the playoffs. They do have a very solid squad. Kellen Acosta still on the team as I believe, um, along with some other signings they've made. They are looking pretty good this year. Um, let's go with FC Dallas next. Uh, decent squad. I always want to put Dallas in the playoffs, and they probably will make playoffs again. Let's see. We'll put Dallas in the playoffs, at least for now. Dallas, a squad that we haven't heard too much of in terms of movement this offseason, at least I haven't, uh, but a very so a solid squad, a team that always plays together. Obviously, a lot of that youth squad morale that they've been playing together, they have that team cohesion and everything like that makes a very good team for them. Um, so I do think they, they have all the capabilities making the playoffs. Houston Dynamo, I am going to put ha as a hedge team. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to... Uh, produce the talent over the long run of the 2020 season to actually make it into a playoff spot but I do think they are very close to making it uh, to that position so I'm going to put them as a hedge team along with Colorado Rapids in the west next we're going to go with Minnesota United I do think Minnesota is going to make the playoffs again this season and I think they're going to do better this season they've made really good signings they've done really well to keep talent and um, create a good team around them that I think they're fully capable of um, of making it to the playoffs. I think they've done really well with keeping a lot of the players that they had and building off of the team that they had from last season. Uh, they have made a couple changes. They've sold off a couple players, but I don't think anything can keep them from the playoffs. Uh, they ended the season really well last season. I do think that they're going to continue that into this new season. Um, next team is going to be Nashville SC. I kind of want to put them as a hedge team. I'm going to put them as bottom of the barrel because they're in the West. If they were in the East, I think this is a top eight team for sure. I think it's definitely a hedge team and maybe even a playoff team with the likes of FC Cincinnati and Orlando City in the team, uh, or in the league rather. But in the West, it's very, very competitive. They're going to be playing a lot of games, uh, pretty scattered across the country, which of course everybody does. But um, I think it's a very hard schedule to go up against the West currently. Uh, they have to play LA Galaxy, LAFC, Seattle, Portland. I mean, all these teams they have to play twice, and they're only going to be playing the Eastern Conference once, um, even though that's like their home base, but just because of how things ended up laying out for them, I think they're going to be bottom of the barrel. That really is saying that they might get ninth or 10th place, um, but I do think that they're fully capable of doing so. Portland, we've already done. Real Salt Lake, I have not spoken about just yet, but they did just announce, where's Real Salt Lake? Um, one, they have Justin Miram, which I think was a great signing from Atlanta United. Um, and then they also just announced that they have Giuseppe Rossi. 
I don't know if Rossi's still good. Honestly, I have no idea if Rossi's still good, but I think he has the capability to be good. I think they're doing a really good job with building a squad here. Um, so I do believe that they might just make playoffs this year. I have to make sure that I have enough places left for these teams, but I think I do. So we have Seattle Sounders, uh, LAFC, LA Galaxy, Portland, FC Dallas, uh, Minnesota United, and uh, Real Salt Lake. So I have one more playoff spot available that's going to have to go between San Jose, Sporting KC, and Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, that's tough. I want to say it's going to be Sporting KC, but it might also... I want to say Sporting KC, but I also want to say uh, the Quakes. But then I have three teams as hedge teams, which just isn't possible. So hmm, we're gonna do it like this. I still think Quakes have a very good chance of moving up in the table. I think that they could squeeze out a playoff spot, but I don't know if I'm fully confident to say that they're definitely going to get the spot. Um, what did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? We have two, four, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Um, and then I do believe, what other team did I forget? Vancouver? Vancouver, oh, I want to say that they're a hedge team too, though. Uh, but I think Sporting KC is the better chance of making the playoffs. I'm going to put Houston bottom of the barrel. I apologize. But Vancouver, I think, does have a very good chance um, to move into that spot. And then I think that does make out the rest of the West, right? So we have the top eight, 11, 12, 13. Beautiful. Let's go, baby. Now we're going to talk about the East. I could just go straight across the bottom here. Let's talk about Philadelphia Union, a squad that I do think is fully capable of making the playoffs, um, but not too highly of a position. I think they did a really good job in keeping in some of their talent. Uh, they did lose a couple players this offseason, but I do think that they're still a very capable team to make playoffs and make a good run in the playoffs as well. Chicago Fire, bottom of the barrel. Let's not even talk about them and their horrible branding decision of that new logo. I think it's going to torch their season. If they don't sell out Soldier Field at least once this season, they're absolutely done for. The morale is going to be shot. I don't think they made the signings they needed to to move forward in a very positive way this season. Uh, maybe here in the next couple of years, but I just don't think it's possible to do this season. Um, and again, because of that disgusting logo, they're going bottom of the barrel. Columbus Crew. Incredible signings. Nagby on the squad. A couple other players as well on the squad. They did lose Will Trapp, but of course Nagby there to replace them. Um... Fernando Adi as well came over to play under Caleb Porter. Do like Caleb Porter. Do think that this is a playoff squad in Columbus. DC United, obviously, I'm putting as a playoff team. No question about it. Um, they got the likes of Emil Asad back. They got Julian Gressel. Um, Paul Ariola, hopefully for their sake, is not injured for the entire season and that, that surgery does go well and they get him back. But I do think DC United has a very good chance of getting a top three position in the East um, and maybe even better than that. If they put together, if they can start playing like a full squad at the very beginning of the season, I genuinely think they could overtake NYCFC for that number one spot along with Toronto and Atlanta. Um, so uh, they're 110% in my mind, a playoff squad. So um, Inter Miami, I think is a hedge team. They could sneak their way into a playoff spot. They didn't bring in a big enough name for me to really believe that they could do it. But I do think that they brought in a lot of good talent. They obviously brought in a, not a world-class manager, but close to it in the Monterey's ex-manager. Um, he's a very good manager. He's managed to bring in some other players around him to build a very good squad. I'm hoping that they tank the beginning of the season and, and David Beckham's like, hey, let's just sign myself onto the squad. And David Beckham comes out in the Inter Miami kit. But I do think that they are a hedge squad and might work their way into the playoffs, but I'm not too sure if they will. FC Cincinnati lost some players, rebuilt their attack, but also lost their coach. And for that reason, I'm saying that they're staying at the bottom of the barrel. Um, I don't believe that they're going to be able to turn it around without their coach um, with the signings that they made. I don't think they made enough 
really, really good signings to put on enough of a show to make it into the playoffs again this year. They might move into that hedge team area around the halfway point of the season if they get in a good coach. Um, some of their signings were good, but just not enough good signings to take them um, all the way. So with that being said, we have one, two, three, four, five, six teams currently in the East. I do think that New York Red Bulls will make the playoffs. Um, I don't know how high they're going to make it into the playoffs. I think they barely sneak in. They, they're like an upper hedge team get, grabbing one of those last playoff spots. Uh, but I do think that they are capable of working their way into the playoffs as usual. Um, very good squad. They did lose Bradley Wright Phillips, but I think they have a lot of talent uh, still surrounding that team. They also lost uh, Robles to Miami as well, their goalkeeper. So that's going to be interesting to see who fills his shoes. But I do still think that they have the talent to barely make it into the playoffs this year. I don't know how high they're going to make it. Uh, New England Revolution, I'm putting as a hedge team. Um, I do think that they are capable of moving into that uh, that playoff spot, especially if Boo or Bo or however you pronounce his name ends up producing goals like he was whenever he first joined New England Revolution. And I think they added to that squad that they honestly could end up pushing pretty far into a playoff spot. But currently, I'm just not sure. I need to see the entire team on the field. So I'm putting New England Revolution down with the hedge teams. And that leaves Impact Montreal, who have signed some pretty good players and Thierry Henry as the manager. Thierry Henry did not do well at Monaco at all. It hurts me to say that as an Arsenal fan, but he didn't do that well. Uh, but I do think he understands the MLS. He obviously played here. It was a different MLS when he played for the New York Red Bulls, but I, he knows what it takes to win in this league and it doesn't take much more than it used to. I think they do have a lot of talent in the squad and I do believe that they could end up squeezing a spot in the playoffs, um, but four, five, six, seven. Wait, do I have seven, right? So Impact Montreal making the playoffs, I think is what I wanna say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Making sure our numbers are good, but that does look like it. I do think Impact Montreal squeeze out a playoff spot, um, probably right next to New York Red Bulls. It might be them on that on the hedge along with Miami, um, along with New England. Um, I think it's entirely possible that both New England and Inter Miami could end up making the playoffs. Um, but I think it's gonna be between New York Red Bulls, Impact Montreal, um, Inter Miami and New England Revolution for the bottom playoff spots. Uh, I do think that this is how the season most likely is going to end up playing itself out. Uh, I just realized I added, I add seven or eight to these. Two, wait, two, four, six, seven, eight. Wait, I've added, well, that's fine. We have one too many teams in both. So I'm gonna move Impact Montreal and Real Salt Lake to hedge teams, I think, because that makes more sense, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, because there's only seven playoff spots. I kept thinking eight for some reason, but there's only seven. So this is how I see the season going. Seattle Sounders, New York City, FC are gonna be challenging for the Supporter Shield this year. Um, I don't know how highly the Supporter Shield number is gonna get. I think the league has stabilized quite a bit um, this season, and I don't think we're gonna be seeing the crazy numbers of the, of the Supporter Shield numbers that have been put up in the past couple seasons. Uh, but I do think that uh, the teams at the top are still capable if they get on a good streak. But rounding out the East, we're going to have New York City FC, Toronto, Atlanta United, Philadelphia Union, Columbus Crew, DC United, and New York Red Bulls making the playoffs. Um, again, New York Red Bulls may drop in and out of that playoff spot, but I do think that they, they're going to squeeze it out. They're just, they're just that consistent of a squad that they're at least going to make the playoffs. Um, in the West, we're going to have Seattle Sounders at the top with LAFC and LA Galaxy close behind. Portland Timbers, FC Dallas, Minnesota United, and Sporting KC rounding up the rest of the playoff spots. I'm going to move Portland down here just because I think that they're most likely, along with Minnesota, to drop out for one of the teams that are hedge squads. I do realize I have more hedge teams for the West than I do the East, and there's a very good reason for that. I do think that the, the West 
is more competitive. I think there's a that that gap is always super close between the top of those playoff spots and right as the hedge team. So um, I do think the West is more competitive in that sense. I do think the results are going to be a lot closer. But the bottom of the barrel is going to be FC Cincinnati, Nashville SC, Houston Dynamo, and Chicago Fire. And then, of course, Orlando City, somewhere in between the bottom of the barrel and hedge teams, most likely. But we're going to throw them at the bottom of the table because they still don't know what the hell they're doing there. Um, and then the hedge teams will go over one more time. Inner Miami, New England Revolution for the East, Colorado Rapids, Vancouver Whitecaps, San Jose uh, Quakes with uh, Impact Montreal and uh, Real Salt Lake rounding out the bottom. So um, let me move that so that it's east and west. These are my predictions for this season. Let me know in the comment section down below where I'm an idiot, where you agree with me. Tweet this at me if you want to. I'll leave this in the description of the video below. Let, uh, go ahead, fill out your own table, tweet it at me, and let me know what you think is going to be the uh, table come the end of the MLS. And at the end of the season, we'll revisit this table and see how wrong I was or how right I was. And then we'll make a playoff bracket from there. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Peace.